Okay, we are on to part two of Pioneer Connection where we are learning about one of our pioneer ancestors. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do in part two. Uh, make sure you download and print the worksheet. Basically this week we are going to be learning about uh, your this ancestor's spouse, their children, and their uh, kind of when they died, when they got married, all of that kind of their adulthood life. Now we next, in the next part, we're going to be talking about uh, if they were Mor Mormon pioneers, kind of their experience with that. So for this part, don't worry about learning about that yet. For this, we're just learning about those relationships, their marriages, their, um, their children, and then where they died. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm here on the ancestor that I chose on her person page in Family Search. So this week, if you have the printable, print it off, the worksheet there, or you can just use a piece of paper if you want to jot these things down. Um, we're basically just going to learn about um, first when they got married, if they got married, um, and their spouse, a little bit about them. Okay? So if you are on Family Search and you scroll down a bit, you can see their family members here. Um, if that's closed, you could just hit that little arrow and see that there. So here's the spouses and children, and that's what we're going to learn about in this part. In the last part, we learned about their parents and their siblings, and now we're learning about their spouse and their children. Okay. So first we can take a look at who their spouse was. Uh, just take note of the dates, when they lived, when they got married, and where. You can write that in on the worksheet. Um, you can also see all of their children. You can see when they lived, their lifespan. Okay, you see that some died as children. If you just give a little click on there, you can see where they were born and then where they died. So it looks like they died um, on their on their way to the Salt Lake Valley. So there, there was probably some heartache there. We also see uh, these two children here that died young as well in Nauvoo. And another one in Nauvoo. Okay. Um, so you see that they had 10 children, uh, Nancy and Moses. Now you can also look at their sources to see, uh, census records are great to see where they lived and what family relationships they had at that time. Um, they didn't start listing all the people in the household until 1850. So you can see this census record in 1850 and you can look at the indexed information here, or you can look at the image. So I just want to show you this quick thing here. Sometimes this indexed information isn't correct. So if we see it lists the Moses and Nancy, and then their children. Normally these are listed by age. The oldest will be first, and then the youngest will be last. So we see that this Eli A says that he was seven. If we um, go back and look at her details, you can see that Eli was born in 1833, so in 1850, he should have been about 17. So when we um, go back and look at that census, you can look at the image and take a look and see what's going on there. Because quite often when people index something, they might get it wrong, especially names. So if it's spelled differently on the index, just take a look at the image and see what's going on. Okay, so here's the household. We see Moses, Tracy, age 41, Nancy, 34. Then we have Eli A. And now this does look like it could be a 7 with a really big upstroke there. But if you look down at this 7 here, it's just a straight little 7 down like that. So I'm thinking that there's actually a 1 here. And then the 7 just kind of connected to it. Okay, so he was actually 17, so it's all good, it's all right. So you can take a look at those sources there and see if you can find any census records and learn about them. You can also see if there's any marriage records. You might be able to find some information about their parents through their marriage record, or you can just find out where they got married um, and see that here's some sort of international marriage record. It says they were married 1832. Okay, but just look through those there. Now also on the worksheet, you can see if they were married more than one time. Often spouses died young and then um, they would remarry. So if we keep scrolling down, we see that yes, she did actually remarry uh, Silas Horace Tracy, who actually 
was her first husband's younger brother. (laughs) And so he was quite a bit younger. He was 14 years younger, and they did have one child. So they got married in 1860, and they had a child born in 1861. Now, another question on the worksheet is if um, the ancestor you chose or their spouse was a polygamist. So if you chose a Mormon pioneer, um, some of them were polygamists at the time. And so if we just click on her first husband, we can see that he actually was not a polygamist. If you scroll down, you see him with her and then no other spouse. So as far as we know, he was not. Now, if we go to Silas, which is actually his younger brother, we can click on his page and we see that he married Susan Elmira Beebe in 1849. They had 12 children. He married Fanny in 1858, and they had nine children. And if you look, you can either look at when their spouses were living, or you can look at the ages of their children to see if they were married at the same time. So this child, he was born in 1860, and you can see that they had children also during the same time. Okay, so they had he had two wives so far. Then he also married Nancy in 1860, Likely, it was just after her husband died, and um, they were probably married so that he could help take care of their children as well. So he had quite the number of children (laughs) to take care of um, in his life. Okay, so we can write that, yes, he was, his spouse, her spouse was a polygamist, her second husband. Okay, let's go back to her again. And we can just do the same thing throughout her life. We can look at her sources and look at those um, census records. Uh, We can see she was in the household of Horace Tracy, which is Silas Horace Tracy, so her second husband. And if you just look here at the index information, it's a little easier to look at. Um, There's Horace and Eliza Tracy, which later find out it was a mother-in-law. Okay, then there's Nancy and Tracy, who's 43. Elmira, that was another wife, and Fanny is another wife. So they lived all together. Um, Sometimes they had different households when there was polygamous relationships, but it looks like they all lived in the same house, and they had a bunch of children here. So you can look through and see if you can find the children um, for your ancestor that you chose there. Um, When I looked through it, there were some from... um, Other marriages and a lot of Nancy's children were living there at that time. Okay, you can also look through their memories and see if you can see any pictures of their family. Maybe there's different houses. Here's a home in Ogden. So um, once they had reached Salt Lake, this is one of her earliest homes. Okay, you can find out what their spouse's occupation was on those census records. Um, Maybe I'll actually just show you that quickly. So on the census record that we were just looking at in 1860, um, her second husband, Silas Horace Tracy, who was her first husband's brother, you can see here he is here, and he was a farmer, okay? You can also see the value of his property was $1,000 and 650, what was that? The value of personal estate. So the value of real estate and then his personal estate, so his home was worth $650. Okay, so just some interesting facts. You can write that on the worksheet and um, see what you can learn about that ancestor you chose. Okay, if you want to find out where they lived at different times, uh, one great and easy way to do that is to see where their children were born. So we see that they were in far west Missouri when this Moses Mosiah Tracy was born, so they lived there. Um, in Kirtland, Ohio, they lived there, uh, Ellsburg, New York. So that was before they left, um, New York, they lived there and it kind of gives you a timeline of where they were living, Nauvoo. So you can put all those places in their residences. Um, it might be neat to even, uh, take a look at the timeline here on Family Search. um, to see, let me show you here. If you look at this timeline there, you can see the map. Um, and you can kind of see where different events happened in their life across across the, the country or across the world even. Okay, then lastly, you can see when they died. So she died in 1902. Um, you can take a look at her death information is that she died in Ogden, Utah. 
and she's buried in the Ogden Cemetery. So you can see the sources and see if there's any information about her death. There's a find a grave um, memorial. You can see her headstone. And okay, so it doesn't look like there is a death record for her. So that's something we could write down for questions and conflicts. Maybe we want to see if we can find a death record for her. Um, there's like a burial database, but I don't think that's a death record. But we could go to Billion Graves or find a grave here. And it has an image um, for her headstone. It's sideways. There we go. So Nancy N.A. Tracy. Okay, it gives when she was born and when she died. Sometimes these also give some more uh, information, but it doesn't look like it has there. It does have some other family members or spouses there. Anyway, so you can just look through. I'm not going to show you how I'm going to do that for her, for everything, because it's going to be different for you and your family member that you chose. But just learn about them, their spouse, um, their children, when they died, and then see if you can learn any information um, about that time in their life.